I actually, from that experience, was able to help the Open Mandriva guys move from URPMI to DNF, which then led to Rosa moving to DNF and a bunch of other distributions moving to, I think like Open Mamba moved to DNF. There was a few others that like, I apparently wound up becoming the de facto guy of like, how do you move an RPM package distribution <laughs> to DNF? And it's happened a lot. Like I also helped the Yocto folks move from Smart, which was an old unmaintained package manager. I've written by the guy who created Snaps. One. Yeah, so Gustavo Niemeyer, when he was at um, Connectiva, later Mandriva, he made the success, he made a successor to apt RPM called Smart. And the reason why was because apt rpm was a pain in the butt to develop and maintain and at the time this was like 17 years ago or something like that um the debian people refused out of principle to consider having an rpm backend for apt just flat out just said no right and there was all kinds of weird funky politics and i think most of it's not written down i got i got Sad. i got fun stories from the people that were involved in it over the years it's always fun with stuff um, like that is just it's just littered there with the mail list it's not written down like that that takes away all my fun <laughs> yeah but uh they just straight up wouldn't consider it they didn't want it they, and so like app rpm wound up being a very difficult to maintain fork mm -hmm. And so Gustavo Niemeyer then went and tried to solve the problem by making a brand new package manager that supported multiple different repo sources, different package manager types. Like I think back in the beginning, it was like Slackware and RPM and Debian. And I think now it supports, R I want to say it supports Arch packages. I, I, it's still a very dead project now, but like at some point somebody added Arch packages, I think to the mix. Um, I don't remember anymore. It's been a long time. But anyway, Gustavo Niemeyer made that. And, uh, mm -hmm. and that was what brought him to Canonical eventually. And though Ubuntu was originally planning on adopting Smart, there was a kind of a revolt about it. And so they didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know more details about that. But that I was assume that's related to the Debian <laughs> stuff in some way. Probably. Um, but... Uh, so they didn't adopt Smart, but Gustavo stayed at Canonical, and eventually, I think it's like, I don't know, it's like a few years later, he made clicks and snaps, and now the dude's the CTO of Canonical. Oh, wait. So <laughs> I thought I'd heard that name. Yeah, Gustavo Niemeyer. I I remember I, the few Canonical employees I've known at the time that used to call him the Mark Whisper, and I guess, oh, that's very true. He's now the CTO, so he gets to work with them all day. <laughs> I, yeah, I knew that name it should have... Yeah, okay, wow. Jeez. I've been all over, man. <laughs> I used to be involved very early, in the very early on in the Snap project. I was a Snap uh, format oversight board, which we didn't really do much. I think the only thing we actually managed to do was get them to use SPDX notation for license tags. Mm -hmm. I think that was it. We got them to do license tags, and we got them to be AppStream compatible, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was it um we didn't get to do much else but i was involved in the snap project i helped uh make snapd work on fedora mm -hmm. i was effectively the maintainer yeah. of the snap system in fedora for many many years i still technically am nominally the maintainer of it uh and i still occasionally do stuff for it but it's it's a lot of it kind of goes on its own kind of thing now